Today I'm going to try something a little bit different and uh, do a little bit of printmaking. I've been wanting to try creating uh, linoleum block prints ever since I went to an exhibit of the art of M.C. Escher at the North Carolina Museum of Art last month. So for my subject, I'm going to try taking a picture of the two ponies that live in my backyard. Uh, they belong to my neighbors, but um, they come over and mow my grass every once in a while and are generally pretty friendly until they realize that I don't actually have any carrots or apples in my pocket. And then they get a little bit impatient with me hanging around. So trying to get this picture before they uh, you know, totally lose their patience with me. But of course, they're more interested in uh, getting in my face whenever I pull my phone out. They're uh, really good at hamming it up for the camera. <laughs> so uh, another one sneaks up behind me here and he actually had put his head between my legs and tried to lift me up, uh, almost knocked me over. So I finally get them distracted eating grass. They get tired of me and uh, I'm able to get my picture. And I've been using this app uh, called Imagine, which lets me take a picture but also convert it into a sort of artistic rendering of the photo. And so here I'm just doing what's called an ink drawing in the program. and sort of tweaking the parameters to get the line thickness that I want and the look that I want. And then to get it over to my computer, the fastest way that I've found so far is just to upload it to my Google Drive, which is included with my email. And then from my Google Drive, I can just download it onto my computer uh, where I can put it into vCarve. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up for a 6 inch by 8 inch block, which is the same size as the handy by cutting area, so that's what I decided to buy at the store. Um, the linoleum is about an eighth of an inch thick, so I put that down as my material thickness. And then just go ahead and import the picture that I just finished uh, creating of the horses. And of course, um, the picture is upside down because my phone always takes pictures up upside down. I'm not sure why, um, but that's okay. I'll deal with that after I do the vector conversion. So I'm just using the same bitmap trace uh, function that I used when I was making t-shirts and creating a vector outline of the image that I've imported. Uh, this one's really easy because it's a nice sharp black and white image um, and it does a really great job of converting into vectors. So I'll go ahead and uh, rotate it a little bit. Uh, I'll actually turn it sideways so that it'll fit well on the block that I'm going to cut and uh, make sure everything's centered. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a V carving using a 90 degree V bit I'm actually going to input a flat depth, which means that no matter how big the area that it's carving out is, it will never go below 0.1 inches in depth. And that will prevent me from cutting into the wood on my linoleum block. So when I first tried to do this, I noticed that it's kind of backwards. Uh, the areas that I wanted to ink were cut low, and the areas that I didn't want to ink were, cut, were left high. So what I do is draw a rectangle around the image and then include that when I do my v-carving. And that actually reverses the direction of the cut and gives me the raised areas that I want and the low areas that I don't. And it also gives me a nice border around the image where there will be no ink and let me get a nice clean print. I'm going to be using double stick tape on the back of my linoleum block and I don't want it to gum up my desk in my studio so I go ahead and lay down some uh, masking tape that I'll tape my part onto and then I can just peel the masking tape up after I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the vacuum uh, for this one just because I know the little linoleum chips are going to stick to everything when I cut them out so hopefully I'll be able to pull up most of that with the dust collection. Uh, I'm connecting to the tool in access point mode. Um, my studio is a little bit far away from my router, which is in my den, and it kind of has a hard time connecting to it. And my internet connection is not always very reliable anyway, so I'd rather connect to it directly using uh, access point mode. So once I get connected, I uh, go ahead and home out the X, Y, and Z axes. Uh, that just ensures that if something happens, like if I lose power, that I'll be able to uh, relocate the home position of my tool without having to guess and uh, be able to resume my cut. So, as usual, using my trusty uh, carpet tape to hold down my part 
And I'm going to line up the part with these little indicators on the inside of the tool that indicate the zero zero position because I want this to be exactly fitted to the 8x6 area that the handy bot's going to cut. And so I want to line it up with the exact the corner of my material with the exact home location. I have, still have my 8th inch bit left over from the last cut that I did, so I'm going to swap that over to my 90 degree V bit. Uh, the 90 degree V bit is one of the three bits that's included with the HandyBot. It's actually the one that uh, ships in the tool and is used to do the first test cut uh, when the tool comes out of the box. So just swapping that over now and making sure to tighten down the collet. Yeah, I forgot one time and my bit fell out, so this time uh, making sure that it's nice and tight before putting it back into my tool. And again, because this material is uh, raised up above the bottom face of the handy bot, I'm going to kind of need to make sure that I get the zero very precise and I just use a piece of the backing from the, the tape and step the tool down slowly until it catches the tape or the paper. And then I uh, hit the orange button next to the Z to zero the Z axis out. So uh, with all that done, I'm ready to start my, my cut. And I've got my vacuum running. Uh, hopefully it will collect most of the dust and uh, keep my desktop clean. Um, the first bit of cut is looking good. I lowered the dust foot a little bit so that it's covering the entire bit. So unfortunately we can't see the cut going on. but. Uh, I'm, it's doing a great job picking up all the dust and keeping my work area really clean, which I appreciate. You can kind of tweak the speed that the router is running at um, using the little dial on top of the router. And, you know, usually what I'll do is get this cut started and then I'll kind of tweak that speed until the cut comes out clean and the router isn't buzzing too much or vibrating. Just uh, taking a look here at all the little drive motors that are running the tool. But it looks like it's going to take about an hour, hour and a half to do this cut, so I go ahead and take a lunch break. I figure I'll go out and bug the horses again, uh, have my sandwich out there while they have their lunch. Well, I guess they kind of eat all day long, so they're pretty much eating lunch all day. But um, they seem a lot more patient with me now that I have food that I can share with them. So back to work, I see that I'm pretty close to being done. A lot of the details are starting to pop out, and the quality of the cuts looking really good, so I'm really happy with that. I was afraid that the linoleum would leave a lot of little burrs everywhere uh, that I'd have to clean out, but it's really looking pretty good. So the finished product uh, looks sharp. Uh, everything stayed pretty clean in there with the dust collection. So go ahead and pull it out and uh, set up my thinking station. I'm just going to use some watercolor paper that I already happen to have in the house and uh, I'll cut it down to the exact size of the block that I'm going to be printing on. Now I got a book about printmaking and they suggested just using a piece of tape to make a hinge for your paper on the side of your block. So just some more of the masking tape that I already had and I will uh, tape that along the corner of the block and use that to drop my paper onto my uh, linoleum block. So I'm going to use black ink for this and I just used some ink from uh, Speedball. It's pretty thick. This is the first time I've ever done this so I'm a little bit surprised at uh, how pasty the ink is. Uh, I was kind of imagining something more liquidy. And so I you know, roll it onto my brayer and get that all uh, evenly distributed, a nice, you want to get like a velvety uh, look to the ink on your brayer and you'll hear it kind of making a sticky sound as you uh, finish up rolling it. Now you may have to re-ink a few times to get the whole block inked well and in this case it looks like my brayer is a little bit uh, uneven so it's not, it's kind of missing the middle so I have to sort of work my way around it and get the middle inked well. But, uh, you know, after a little while, I get a, a good level of ink on it, and I'm ready to give it a try. So, drop my paper on, and then compress it from behind using this uh, padded uh, plate right here. And just to make sure that I get kind of a nice even pressure all over everything and get ink uh, well distributed onto my print. So, the print turned out pretty well.
Um, I can see a couple of areas where I didn't get completely uniform inking, but the texture looks great and uh, a lot of the details are really sharp. So this is actually a pretty good process for making prints.